Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police say so far they have no answers. A man murdered overnight on the city's northeast side. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. A new phase in the coronavirus pandemic and one of the most complicated missions in this country's history, the rollout and distribution of the Pfizer vaccine. More details about the shipment and arrival. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, already 57 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few minutes. But until then, good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday, December 13th. Thank you so much for joining us. Yesterday turned out to be a gorgeous day outside. It was beautiful. I took the dogs on a nice walk through a park. I also um, stayed in for a little bit and watched a movie. Have you guys seen Safety on Disney Plus? No. No. Oh, it's very like Remember the Titans. It was oh. so good. So if today is a if it is kind of yucky, it's a good stay in movie. Yeah, at least for the morning because it's going to be gray and just a little damp out there. You know, we do have areas of fog and patchy drizzle as well as even some light rain, but things are going to be kind of all over the board today uh, in the weather world. So looking out first with visibility, you can see that visibility is less than two miles up at Bernie Stage Airfield and in Kerrville uh, along I-10 there. Again, we're dealing with some areas of patchy fog and patchy drizzle as well. Visibility down uh, two miles to eight miles in San Antonio. Antonio. A wider view here. We've got almost no visibility, zero visibility in Rock Springs down to a mile and a quarter in Carrizo Springs and down to two and a half miles in Del Rio. It's generally, uh, relatively speaking, a warm start to the day. Temperatures are in the 50s, so you might need a light jacket. Uh, it's 57 degrees in San Antonio, 56 in Del Rio, 60 in Pleasanton and 60 in Gonzales. And we're even seeing some rain showers on the radar, especially Especially down toward Victoria, that's where we do have a thunderstorm. But here in San Antonio, we may only just see a few passing light rain showers during the morning hours. So there's a lot to talk about, including some morning light rain during the middle of the side. You won't believe how windy it's going to be around San Antonio. We'll also talk about fire danger. Sarah, this morning is starting off for a mystery for San Antonio homicide investigators. is live at Public Safety Headquarters where that investigation is underway. Good morning, Katrina. And that someone called them after seeing the victim in his car sitting in the middle of a busy the police arrived around 3.30 this morning, and that's exactly what they found. The car in the middle of busy Judson Road near George Cooper Street. Police say the car had... there but we're not able to do anything for him that man already was dead police say right now they have no idea who shot him or why they also have not released the name of that man reporting live at public safety headquarters katrina White. the teen who was fatally shot outside his home earlier this month 16 the same spot his body was found as they shared his family's grief out
She said he had a special way of connecting to people, but it all came to a people and then this this happens to him i feel sorry for him because he loved life so much the medina county sheriff's office arrested 18 year old david garcia jr arrested and charged with ethan's murder no motive motive has been released but investigators believe the two teens knew each other now to the latest on the pandemic here in Bear County, local health officials reporting 992 new cases, no new deaths reporting, but this does bring a total of 93,476 COVID-19 cases, 1,418 people have died from the virus since the pandemic hit us here at home. Checking in on local hospitalizations, 697 people in our local hospitals, 238 in the ICU, 125 on ventilators. And this morning, a new phase in the pandemic and one of the most complicated missions in our nation's history, the rollout and distribution of the first approved vaccine. ABC's Ty Hernandez has this story. Today, a major undertaking in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic begins. The Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine will start shipping from its Kalamazoo, Michigan plant less than 48 hours after it was given emergency authorization use by the FDA. UPS planes specially equipped with ultra-cold freezers will move the precious vaccines to hospitals and other holding facilities around the nation. The first vaccines are expected to start Monday. HHS Secretary Alex Azar and General Gus Perna monitoring distribution efforts from the Operation Warp Speed Vaccine Operations Center. My guidance was to ensure this precious commodity is received by the trained professionals at each state. I expect the first shipments to arrive Monday morning. Hospitals say they have been preparing for this day. We've actually been practicing because there are some special handling requirements for this vaccine. So we have everything scheduled in detail and we're ready to go. Healthcare workers will be among the first to receive the vaccine. I'm excited. The team is excited. We're ready. We're signed up. We have our scheduled day. Let's do this. An independent panel recommended to the CDC that people 16 years and older get the vaccine. The benefits of the vaccine on total cases isn't expected for several months. So medical experts say people need to continue to wear masks and socially distance. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, D.C. police stayed busy Saturday night after mostly peaceful pro-Trump rallies throughout the day turned into civil unrest by nightfall. First responders say they transported four critically, critical stabbing victims to local hospitals. There have been at least 23 arrests, including for six assaults on police officers, 10 simple assaults, four riotous acts, possession of a taser, and crossing a police line. Country music star Charlie Pride has died from complications from COVID-19. His representative said the 86-year-old died in Dallas just yesterday. Pride was a child of a Mississippi sharecropper. He served in the Army. He scored 52 top 10 country hits, including 29 number ones. In 2001, he became the first African-American inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Time now, 607, 57 degrees out. Do you like squash? Yeah, I like squash. Mm. <laughs> it's, well, it's a perfect time to eat some butternut squash soup. Mm, that sounds good. Still ahead, we tell you the benefits of squash and easy ways to prep it. Good. I think Eric Hernandez is doing that story. Really excited. All right, Apple launching a new fitness service. More details about the launch date, the cost, and what it's going to include next on GMSA. Taking a look outside with live cam. It Ew. looks ugh, Yeah, <laughs> kind of yucky out there. 57 degrees. What will our Sunday look like? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Apple announcing the new launch date for their new subscription fitness service. It's tomorrow, surprise. Apple first announced Fitness Plus in September saying it would be compatible with the health data tracked by Apple Watch. The service will cost $9.99 a month or $79.99 for a year. Ooh. And will feature a variety of workout videos from yoga and dance to strength training accessible from an iPad, iPhone, or Apple TV. A lot of the classes, which do feature Apple Music, will not require any equipment. And new videos will actually be added weekly. Obviously, this is huge during the pandemic. You don't need weights. A lot of people can't go to the gym. So this is an easy way 
to, you know, just take part right from your own home. Max is excited about the dance video. Yes, Sarah. big Zumba guy over here. You Zumba? I've never Zumba'd. I used to be a Zumba. I have family yeah, Zumba. Why would you lie to us I like have that? Family, I have family Did you Zumba. hear what I said? I did, but I ignored <laughs> it. What did you say? I used to be a Zumba instructor. We should do a Zumba class. We, we should. should. We should move on from talking about Zumba. Oh my gosh, the gears are turning. <laughs> We're seeing some rain on the radar. It's light around San Antonio, but down toward Victoria, there's actually a thunderstorm going on right now. Uh, so uh, these areas along the coastal community, so Cuero, you could also see some uh, thunderstorms here too as we continue with the morning hours through the early afternoon. But here in San Antonio, this is kind of what we're going to be dealing with today. Just some very passing light rain showers out near Seguin. We're seeing some light returns there as well out toward Gonzalez. So kind of just along the highway there from Seguin to Gonzalez, some very light rain this morning around San Antonio, though it's fairly quiet. The one thing that you may run into is some patchy fog or some patchy drizzle, uh, and you can see that we're looking at visibility is reduced in many places. It's down to eight miles around the airport, but especially up in the higher elevations, Bernie Sage Airfield, Kerrville, visibility down to a mile and a quarter out there. So again, this is because of fog and patchy drizzle. You can look outside right now and you can see the haze on the horizon. Uh, it's 57 degrees and it's cloudy around San Antonio. We have an east wind at about five miles per hour. The morning is going to be pretty gray, but Right at about lunch, we are going to have a cold front move through and our weather is going to flip. It's going to be a very interesting weather pattern in the afternoon. For now, though, it is pretty mild with temperatures in the 50s, 52 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 55 in Bulverde, 56 in Bandera, 58 in Hondo, 55 at uh, JBSA Randolph. And a wider view here. You have to go to the west to see the really cold, cold core of air. Temperatures are in the single digits in parts of Colorado, 24 in Albuquerque. There's our cold front behind it. Some much colder air, although it won't really feel cold in San Antonio until after nightfall. So keep that in mind. The one thing that this cold front is going to do, though, is make it very windy. Now, in parts of North Texas, some wintry precip is expected. But here in San Antonio, again, we'll only be dealing with patchy drizzle passing light rain showers this morning. This front is going to race towards San Antonio. It'll make it here right at about noon. Again, that's how long we'll have a chance for some light rain in the forecast, but very quickly skies will clear behind the front. The second half of the day will be sunny and the second half of the day will be windy. This is a look at the potential wind gusts around San Antonio, potentially wind gusts of up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. Those are pretty strong wind gusts. So if you have any light patio furniture, light Christmas decorations outside, you're going to want to really anchor those down. Speaking of the winds, West of San Antonio, notice all these counties in the hot pink color here. That is a red flag warning, which means very high fire danger. Winds will be again from the northwest up to 25 miles per hour, gusting up to 45 miles per hour with low humidity. All it takes is a small spark to spread grass fires in these areas. So please avoid outdoor burning today. Well, we are going to have a fairly mild day temperature wise, a high temperature in the upper 60s. But again, it's going to get windy really quickly and then it'll get a cold tonight with temperatures falling into the 30s by midnight and we're going to have wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour this evening. There's also the Geminid meteor shower. It peaks tonight, uh, so just allow about 20 minutes for your eyes to adjust. You could see up to two meteors a minute, especially if you go outside of the city center. Looking ahead to the week, it's going to be cold every morning with temperatures in the 30s and cool every afternoon. Plenty of sunshine, but high temperatures only getting up into the low 60s maximum. So it's going to be a cool week ahead. I want to see that meteor shower tonight. Try it. I really but want it'll be blustery. It'll be windy and no, cold. I'm such mm. a wimp when it comes to being out in the cold. <laughs> Maybe not. All right. Thank you, Sarah. 616, 57 degrees out. A man shocking passengers of a plane as he climbs up it when taking off. That story ahead, still ahead. And making sure you get tons of nutrients and flavor in your next meal. Next on GMSA, we are giving you an inside look at the health benefits of, yes, winter squash. And Sarah's going to give us some inside tips on easy ways to prep it. Right, Sarah? Right. Okay, pick three. Six, five, six. Fireball one. 
daily four four zero six five fireball zero. Too busy thinking about the squash. Yes. Cash five, three, nine, 15, 16, 23, Lotto, Texas, four, 31, 36, 50, 52, 54, and Powerball, 17, 54, 56, 63, 69, Powerball 20, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. Winter squashes are perfect to have on hand during cooler months. They're not only packed with immune-enhancing nutrients, but also go well with heartier dishes and last a long time in your kitchen. That's right. To tell us some good news about squash is our Eric Hernandez. Although they look and taste different, squash are all very similar nutritionally. They are also inexpensive, versatile, and easy to prepare. Acorn and butternut are some of the most common types of squash, but there are several other kinds to choose from, like delicata, pumpkin, kabaka, and honey nut. According to Consumer Reports, squash is loaded with vitamin A, which helps build a strong immune system and eye health, vitamin C, and plenty of fiber. It actually has less of an impact on blood sugar than white rice. If you're not sure how to prepare it, check out these tips. First, store it in a dry, cool place. That would help extend its shelf life. Next, figure out how you will use it in your meal. If you're looking for something low carb, use it as a spaghetti substitute. You can also cut it into cubes, bake it, or even roast the seeds for an afternoon snack. Once you've figured out how you're going to make it, you can spice it up by adding a little maple syrup, cinnamon, or go savory with herbs like thyme and rosemary. If that's too time consuming, you can also buy it pre-cut, frozen, or canned. Those still supply the same amount of nutrients as fresh options. And a final tip from the pros, if you find yourself in a pinch, you can always poke holes in the top and microwave your squash in high for 10 to 12 minutes. Just know that you won't get the maximum flavor as you would by roasting it. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. I have a squash right now at home. I have a yellow spaghetti squash. It's been there for two weeks, but it's still good and I need to cook it. I'm going to do it this week. So we, during this pandemic, my girlfriend and I have been picking up um, meals from social media. Spaghetti squash, we had a sweet one and also like a Parmesan one. Yep, going to do that this week. It was delicious, super easy. Mm -hmm. All right, 622, 57 degrees out. A man in Las Vegas climbs oh, a plane goodness. during takeoff. Oh, this is terrifying. You don't want to miss this story next. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Ansira Nissan. Hello, I'm Mark Anthony from Asira Nissan. Wanting to wish Military City a happy holidays from my military family to yours. Happy holidays. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. A crazy sight to see, especially if you're sitting in the window of an airplane and you look out. Yeah, okay, so a video shows a man climbing on the wing of a plane as it was about to take off from Las Vegas, from the Las Vegas area airport on Saturday. Just take a look, so a spokesperson with the International Airport says he had hopped a fence. Staff spotted him around 2 in the afternoon. So the spokesperson also says police and airport officials took the man to a medical facility. As for the plane, it went back into the gate for a full inspection. So yeah, imagine you're sitting in the window seat and out of nowhere you just see a guy climbing on the wing. I would just be like, what? This is 2020. What is this supposed to happen? Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, there's a man. <laughs> There's a man on the, on on the, on on the, the plane. Wing. I'm watching him. I also don't know exactly what he's trying to do. Why did he take his shoes off? Like, how does that make it any easier to <laughs> But what, what's the ultimate goal on this one? I don't know. Poor is, is he trying to get a free ride? Because that doesn't seem very safe. I don't know. I just hope he's safe. All right. Well, time now is 626, 57 degrees out. We've already missed so much this year due to the coronavirus, from birthdays to weddings. But what about the holiday celebrations? Mm. We will tell you more still ahead in our next half hour. And big news from the CDC on the vaccine, but experts say it's still too soon to let your guard down. The latest on the vaccine timeline next on GMSA. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Just about 6.30 this morning, December 13th. Yesterday turned out to be a gorgeous day. Really pretty. Walked around the complex, saw a lot of UTSA grads out there taking pictures, so congratulations to everyone congratulations. who graduated. It was awesome to see. UTSA didn't play football yesterday for a number of reasons, but either way, a gorgeous day out there and already 57 degrees, but kind of yucky out there. Yeah. yeah, this morning looks a little different than yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, we were dealing with sunshine, 
but this morning it's kind of gray out there and we're even seeing some rain on the radar mainly to the south and to the east of San Antonio, but our, our rain chances in San Antonio are going to continue through about lunch. Now it should only be light rain, but the chance is there. There is a storm, however, out near Victoria, just east of Victoria. Look at all that lightning there. It's been a while since we've seen lightning on the radar, uh, but uh, here closer to San Antonio, let's go a little east toward Guadalupe County and Seguin. You can see the light rain showers that are just starting to push into Guadalupe County. Uh, Gonzalez also dealing with some patchy light rain as well as Nixon and in parts of Wilson County. There's one little isolated light rain shower pushing to the north. So Elmendorf, you might get a few sprinkles here in just a bit. Uh, meanwhile, out uh, across parts of uh, the northwestern section of the KSAT 12 viewing area, there's some fog and some areas of patchy drizzle as well. So we're seeing visibility down to less than a mile out near Kerrville, down to less than a mile at Bernie Stage Airfield as well. Visibility practically zero out toward Rock Springs, visibility down to three miles in Del Rio. So it is a gray day, uh, start to the day rather, and it's a little gray uh, and damp in some places as well, mainly again to the east of San Antonio, but we're going to have a big weather shift right around noon. A cold front is going to move through and then the second half of the day will be sunny, but very, very windy. We're going to talk about how uh, wind gusts could be potentially above 45 miles per hour today coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police say a gathering of people at a home just southwest of downtown suddenly turned very unfriendly, ended with one man suffering stab wounds and another in handcuffs. Our Katrina Weber has more on this story. She is live from public safety headquarters. Good morning, Katrina. Do police know what triggered this? Well, good morning. Uh, police say that witnesses told them that this dispute between the two men had to do with a woman. Now they found they say that the stabbing happened at a home on South Holmes Street near South Brazos. But police say that paramedics actually found the victim down the street with a stab wound in his chest. They believe he ran away from the home after being stabbed. Police say he was among he was among a group of people talking and drinking in the living room of that home. The witnesses told them that things got out of hand when the talk began to center around a woman and her child. They say that's when the suspect pulled out a knife and stabbed that other man. The police took that suspect into custody right there at the home, and they say that the man who was stabbed was stable as he was taken to a hospital. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, Texas health officials are reporting a small increase in hospitalizations from COVID-19 in the Lone Star State. The health department reported a rise in hospitalizations from 9,109 to 9,192 patients. There are 13,254 new cases and 235 people have died from this virus as of Saturday. The seven day rolling average of the new cases in the state rose to 11,295 per day. Now here at home, we are still waiting to find out when we can expect the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine to get here, but here's what we know right now. While there is no specific date set for vaccines to be administered, San Antonio Fire Department Public Information Officer Joe Arrington tells us fire crews, as they are first responders, have been told to begin filling out forms needed to get the vaccine shots. In addition to completing these forms, Arrington tells us firefighters have been instructed to get ready for their vaccine, which could begin at any time this week. Now looking at the macro perspective, there have been more than 16 million cases of COVID-19 recorded across the country. The rate increasing at a staggering rate. To put that into perspective, Johns Hopkins University of reporting, it took 264 days to reach the first 8 million cases and just 57 days to reach the second 8 million. So the CDC's vaccine advisors giving Pfizer BioNTech's vaccine the thumbs up feels like a light at the end of the tunnel, but experts say it's too soon to let your guard down. CNN's Britt Conway has the latest on the vaccine timeline. A milestone in the fight against COVID-19. 11 in favor, three recused, the motion passes. Saturday, the CDC's vaccine advisors voted to recommend Pfizer and BioNTech's vaccine to Americans 16 years and older, leaving it up to the CDC director to accept the recommendation. Sunday, Pfizer expects the first shipments of the vaccine to leave the Michigan facility. Then... I expect the first shipments to arrive Monday morning. Uh, extensive coordination 
uh, will ensure that this occurs. And by the end of the month. Our calculations uh, believe that we're going to have 40 million doses. But remember, advisors to the CDC have recommended health care workers and long term care facility residents be the first in line. So what about everyone else? So that's going to be up to the nation's governors as they prioritize within their states. But you should start seeing in, at points in February and March general population vaccinations occurring. And by April. It will be, I guess you want to call it open season in the sense of anyone, even the non high priority groups could get vaccinated. But experts say about 70 percent of Americans will need to get vaccinated before we potentially reach herd immunity. So we are looking at a long path until we can stop these basic public health measures. Still, they're optimistic. We see that there is hope on the horizon. Not today, not tomorrow, but it's coming. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And to make sure, visit our website for the latest updates on the coronavirus pandemic here at home and for the latest numbers in Bear County and to Texas to the latest news on the vaccine and when it will be arriving here in San Antonio. Just head over to our website, ksat.com slash coronavirus. Now to a familiar face that will be taking on a new role at Texas State University, a Texas politician and former presidential candidate set to join the faculty of Texas State next semester. Jacob Rodriguez has more on the announcement. Beto O'Rourke is coming to Texas State University. The former congressman who had a popular but unsuccessful 2018 campaign run is slated to teach Texas politics next semester. The students that we talked to had mixed emotions about the announcement. I didn't really know he was coming, but personally I'm pretty indifferent to it. He seems like a cool guy. I don't know that much about it. I have heard that he's coming and I think it's kind of cool just because he's really well known. But I also think it's kind of strange just because he doesn't really have a teaching background. According to the university, O'Rourke will be paid $7,500 for teaching the course, and the class size will be limited to 25 students. For more on the announcement, head to KSAT.com. Jacob Rodriguez, KSAT 12 News. Well, San Antonio continues to grow and bring in new businesses and new companies, even in the midst of this pandemic. And part of our city's growth is Port San Antonio, and there are big projects on the horizon. This morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m. and 8.30 a.m., the president and CEO of Port San Antonio, Jim Pershbach, joins us live to discuss the future of tech here in the Alamo City, workforce development, possible new arena, and the importance of Space Force. If you have any questions you'd like asked, submit them right now on KSAT.com. Just head over to the Leading SA section. Time now is 637, 57 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, we are all wondering how our holiday celebrations will, will, what it will look like in this middle of the pandemic. Should we stay at home or should we even visit family at all? The details still ahead. And the Hubble Space Telescope turned 30 years old in 2020. How NASA is celebrating the big birthday next on GMSA. Very cool. Take a look outside with live cam, 57 degrees. Those images not as cool as the ones from the Hubble Space Scope. Space, space, help me out here. Telescope. Telescope, scope. There we go. I can't talk. I'll let Sarah Spivey do the talking when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. The Hubble Space Telescope turning 30 years old in 2020. And to celebrate, NASA is releasing 30 never before seen images of the wonders of space. I love these photos. They show galaxies, star clusters, and nebulae. Did I say that right, Sarah Spivey? Nebulae. nebulae, all of which are visible from a home telescope. They're part of a collection called the Caldwell Catalog. Now, the Hubble Telescope has been capturing dazzling images like these since it was launched into space in April of 1990. You can see dozens more images. Just head to NASA's website. These are so cool. Speaking of space, mm -hmm. yeah. tonight the Geminid meteor shower is going to peak. And although it's cloudy right now, it will be clear uh, this evening. And but it will be windy and cold, so keep that in mind if you want to go sightseeing this evening. Of course, there are other places where you can see lights just around here in San Antonio. It is the Christmas season. Windcrest, beautiful light show out there. Uh, right now outside, it is gray. It's 57 degrees, cloudy, with some patchy fog developing out there, and even some light rain showers as well. Now, the real rain is down near Victoria, where there are some thunderstorms uh, going on. Plenty of flashes of lightning. Howlettsville, Quero, I don't quite think that the thunderstorm is actually going to make it to you. This is heading kind of more to the north and to the east, but you may have some uh, light uh, tomorrow 
moderate rain here, Hallettsville and Quero. Other than that, we are seeing some passing light rain showers at Wilson County uh, next to Nixon Smiley and out toward Gonzales, starting to reach into parts of Guadalupe County as well. Light rain showers will be possible. A warm front is actually starting to push on off uh, closer to uh, San Antonio, and that should allow for a bit more coverage of the light rain showers early this morning. Other than that, there are some areas of fog. Kerrville visibility down to a half a mile. Similar story out toward uh, Rock Springs. Visibility down to less than two miles in Carrizo Springs, down to four in New Braunfels, down to a mile and three quarters out toward Gonzales and down to three miles in Del Rio. Those temperatures are right at the dew points, and that's why we're seeing the fog, patchy drizzle, and areas of light rain develop as well. Generally a mild morning in the upper 50s around the KSAT 12 viewing area, but a wider view here and you can see just how cold it is across parts of the Rockies. Temperatures in the teens and in the single digits. Here's where our cold front is and it is going to move through San Antonio right around lunch. Let me take you through the future cast in a bit, but first we'll see all the snowfall that's occurring across parts of Oklahoma and the panhandle of Texas. North Texas could see some wintry precip because of this front, but here in San Antonio, the only kind of precipitation we're going to get are, is the possibility for some light rain this morning until that front moves through right around about lunch. Now, as it does so, it's going to become sunny very, very quickly. That front is going to clear things out, really drop humidity and switch around our winds to the west northwest. Winds are going to be very very windy, gusty, up to about 40 to 45 mile per, miles per hour. So it's going to be one of those days where you're going to know when the front moves through because it's going to become windy like that. And on top of it, humidity is going to drop. And I want to caution everyone, there's going to be fire danger today. In fact, a red flag warning for points west of San Antonio because fire danger is going to be very, very high. The ground is very dry out to the west. Humidity is going to be less than 20%. So any tiny little spark could result in grass fires. Please avoid any kind of outdoor burning. If you do smoke, make sure to extinguish those cigarettes fully and throw them in the trash because if you throw them on the ground, it could very easily cause a grass fire. Now again today it's going to be a great start through about noon and then we'll see total sunshine a high temperature only near 68 so we're not going to see a very cold day but tonight it'll get very cold pretty quickly and windy again temperatures will be in the low 40s by 10 30s by midnight with a wind from the north gusting up to 40 miles per hour today uh, and again we'll have sustained winds of up to 30 miles per hour today in the week ahead it should be pretty quiet we'll have cold mornings in the 30s and cool afternoons in the 50s and in the 60s with tons of sunshine really our only chance for rain over the next seven days is, is this morning so hope you get some rain we could use it. Five days of 30s. Burr. Burr. There we go. All right, we're officially December. 646, 57 degrees out. Holiday celebrations have a whole new meaning this year. Should we continue with quarantine or should we go out and see your family mm. this holiday season? We have that story next. Let's take a live look at the roadways right now. Everything looks like it is smooth sailing out there, but if anything does pop up, we will definitely keep you posted. Take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, six, five, six, fireball one, daily four, four, zero, six, five, fireball zero. Cash five, three, nine, 15, 16, 23, lotto Texas, four, 31, 36, 50, 52, 54. Powerball 17, 54, 56, 63, 69, Powerball 20, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Welcome to KSAT Deals at KSATDeals.com. Today we have three products for you at great prices. We start with the Retro Game Console. This comes with 620 pre-installed games and two remote controllers. Now the retail price, $99. The KSAT Deals price, $39.99. That's a 60% discount. Moving on to the Aquasonic Toothbrush and Travel Case. This has 40,000 vibrations per minute. Comes with a travel case and eight brush heads. The retail price, $99. Case at deals price, $39.99. A 59% discount. Moving on to the Ultimate Anti-Aging Duo. The 24 karat gold and B Venom Anti-Aging Beauty Bundle. Nature's Botox. Retail price, $512. The case at deals price, 
$39.99. That's a 92% discount. And you can only get these deals at ksatdeals.com along with several others. Welcome back. Of course, we all want to see our families after a hard year, but is it safe yet? COVID cases are still rising all over the country with over 13 million people infected. So we all know it is better to stay home than go out, but after months of isolation, is it finally safe to visit our loved ones for the holidays? David Sears has the story. Before you decide whether to stay or go, first step, evaluate your needs and risks. What are the ages of the family members traveling and where are you heading? Older members have higher risk while younger members are more likely to carry COVID asymptomatically. Before gathering, get tested. While airlines have made sure planes are safe, airports and other passengers can be high risk variables. If possible, driving is the safest option. And when it's finally time to celebrate, be sure to stay outside or in well ventilated areas. Always wear a mask and increase distance when eating. Consider having a best mask contest to make it more fun for everyone. Also, it's best not to stay in the same house. Consider an Airbnb or rental nearby. And if you still don't know what to do, check out this interactive tool. Just scroll over the county you're in, put in how many people will be at the party, and we'll let you know your risk of getting COVID. Remember, masks not only protect yourself, but they protect others as well. It only takes a moment to be exposed to the virus. So, even if you think your risk is low, wear one for Grandma. David Sears, Case at 12 News. Time now is 652, 57 degrees now. Let's take a look at some birthdays. This is Terry. He is 43 years old. Happy birthday, Terry. Happy birthday, Terry. And next up, we have Ezekiel, two oh. years old. Happy look at that birthday. Air. Oh, that's adorable. All right. So Remember to keep us in your birthday pictures at ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We share them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Take a look. Good morning. Coming up on GMA Historic Moments as the Pfizer vaccine travels across the country, the shipping center is taking on the challenge as hospitals prepare to receive the doses. This as America sets more terrible records in the pandemic, plus violent clashes between Trump supporters and counter demonstrators. One person shot in what authorities are calling a riot. And finally, Sarah Fuller makes college football history again, becoming the first woman to score in a power five football game. Her reaction to an epic moment. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. A deadly shooting on the northeast side of town has homicide investigators a bit baffled this morning. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They're trying to figure out who shot that man and why. The police say that they found the man inside his car, stopped in the middle of Judson Road near George Cooper Street. Someone called them around 3.30 this morning after noticing the car there. Police say it was full of bullet holes and the man inside it had been shot. Although paramedics arrived, there wasn't anything they could do to save him. That man died at the scene. Investigators are still working to identify him and also to figure out who shot him and why they did. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Just a reminder, our KSAT community partners are still stuffing sock stockings for SA youth. You can help spread a little holiday cheer by donating small toys, arts and crafts, and healthy snacks. The Stuff a Stocking Drive runs through December 18th. We have more information on how you can help right now on ksatcommunity.com. And again, you may run into a few light rain showers this morning as well as some drizzle, but there is a thunderstorm down near Victoria that is continuing to push on off to the north. Taking a look at the radar closer to uh, San Antonio and in Guadalupe County, we're seeing some light rain showers as well. And then generally what you'll run into more than anything this morning are areas of patchy fog. Visibility is down to four miles at the airport, but you go up I-10 toward Birdie Stage Airfield. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile there, down to half a mile in Kirk down to four miles in New Braunfels as well. So we've got some visibility lowered because of fog. And again, you could run into one or two light rain showers. We'll carry a 30% chance for light rain through 10 o'clock in the morning. But around noon, we're going to get a cold front that'll move through. That'll clear skies very quickly. The second half of the day will be totally sunny but very, very, very windy gusts up to 40 miles per hour. And then look at that temperatures drop into the 40s by 9 p.m. Just how gusty will it be tonight? Again, after about sunset, we could see wind gusts of up to 
40 miles per hour. This evening, something also exciting happening. The Geminid meteor shower uh, it peaks tonight. You could see up to two meteors a minute if you get away from the city lights. And if you end up uh, looking at the darkest part of the sky, a lot 20 minutes for your eyes to adjust. And again, you should be able to see maybe maximum two meteors. A minute pretty cool there oh. now looking ahead to the rest of the forecast just know that we're going to have cold mornings temperatures in the 30s just about every morning this week and afternoons in the 50s so it's going to be a cool cool week ahead with that other front that arrives on tuesday sarah and max we are really uh, only going to not really see any chance for rain then either so this morning our only chance for rain over the next seven days and as you can tell just some light rain possible. and how far out of the city do you think is best like is that just like get up 30 into the hill country you know hour, probably an hour further country, out you yeah. go the better and probably west and northwest because you think about the big cities out toward austin mm. out east toward mm. houston Try like going ocean. west yeah west okay mm -hmm. right. my plan for tonight sarah <laughs> thank you sarah well we're going to take an hour long break for good morning america when we come back We'll be here at 8 a.m. We are going to have Jim Birchbach, the CEO and president of Port San Antonio. We're going to be talking about technology and the future economic growth of San Antonio. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you in a bit. But the heavier uh, showers and rain is down near Victoria. Some storms out there. Light rain near Hallettsville. Generally, though, all of us are dealing with some kind of fog. It's patchy around San Antonio, a little bit more dense up toward Kerrville and Kerr County. Today's weather is going to be very interesting. A gray start, but a cold front around noon will make it sunny and very windy. 68 for the high, but winds could gust up to 40 miles per hour from the northwest today. Please avoid any kind of outdoor burning. We do have some clouds out there this morning, and as you can see on the time lapse, it's pretty gray. Uh, temperatures are in the 50s, though, so it's pretty mild out there. We could run into a couple of light rain showers, uh, and we are seeing some thunderstorms out near Victoria, but around San Antonio, really only light rain is possible through noon. Again, Gonzalez and Hallettsville seeing a little light rain as well as near Seguin. Now, the main thing this morning is going to be some areas of fog. Visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in some places. Places. So it is a gray start, but around noon we are going to have a front move through. That's going to really flip our weather pattern. It's going to be sunny and windy uh, this afternoon. Winds could gust up to 40 miles per hour from the west northwest, and it's going to get cold again. Gusty winds will continue uh, through tomorrow morning. Please avoid any kind of outdoor burning today. I wish I could wear jeans <laughs> like Rob does. All right, today is going to be really interesting. Gray to start with some passing light rain, but a cold front will arrive at noon. That'll make it sunny and very windy. Today, winds will gust up to the northwest 40 miles per hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Chances are a local man never saw it coming. He says he was carjacked by what sounds like a whole family. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Plus, looking at the future of tech in the Alamo City, workforce development, and the importance of Space Force. We'll be live with the president and CEO of Port San Antonio in today's leading essay segment. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, I promise our cameras do work. It is just that gray outside, 56 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, December 13th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Yesterday, the sun was out. It was gorgeous outside. This morning, a different start. It was. It's funny because you said gray, but for a second I thought, oh, it looks cray outside. <laughs> I was like, ooh, Max getting with the cray cray no, jargon. No, I'm not. I'm not that trendy. But Sarah Spivey is. Cray as in cray cray, like crazy. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? I think yeah. that's where she went with yeah. it. The weather will be cray today. Yeah. We have we to are. wait for a front to arrive in the afternoon. Right now, though, it is gray outside. We do have areas of fog, as you can see, and even some areas of light rain. It's 56 degrees outside at the airport. A little bit of light rain being picked up at the airport as of about 10 minutes ago or so ago. Uh, visibility is down to a quarter of a mile, so we do have some dense fog in the area. Please be advised that if you have to get out early this morning, just know that you might have to use those low beams because of the, the dense fog in some places. 
The heaviest rain right now is along the central uh, coastal plain, rather uh, just toward Victoria, but we are seeing some light rain showers out near Hallettsville as well. Around San Antonio, some very passing light rain showers on the western edge of Loop 1604 there on the west side of town right over Medina Lake. We do have some passing light rain showers, some passing light rain showers up into parts of Comal County as well uh, near Canyon Lake. So you may run into a couple of very quick passing light rain showers, but you'll definitely run into some areas of fog this morning. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Kerrville, down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels, and here in San Antonio, down to a quarter of a mile in Fredericksburg, all but zero up in Rock Springs. And today, as we said, is going to be a very busy weather day. We do have some morning light rain out there, but right around midday, we will get a cold front. Then it'll be very sunny and it will be very, very windy. Winds could gust up to 40 miles per hour today, so there is a lot to talk about in a jam packed forecast. All of the forecast for you coming up in a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Not quite the meetup a man had in mind. He told San Antonio police he was carjacked by a woman with a gun in a parking lot in a park just northwest of downtown. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters with that story. Good morning, Katrina. We understand the woman was not alone. Well, good morning. That's right. That man told uh, police that the woman who had a gun also had five children with her. That He says those were the carjacking suspects. Now, let me give you a look at the video. That man says that he had gone to Martinez Creek Trail around 1130 last night, expecting to meet up with a woman. But based on what he told police, he got more than he expected. He says the woman who approached him with five children in tow pulled out a gun and demanded the keys to his SUV. He says she then loaded all of those kids into his silver Nissan Rogue and drove off, heading toward Interstate 10. The police searched the area using their helicopter, but they did not find that SUV or the woman or the five children. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, one man dead after a shooting on the northeast side. San Antonio police tell us this is all around 3.30 a.m. That man who was found shot, he was inside his own vehicle. It was stopped in the middle of Judson Road near George Cooper Street. Police tell us the car was full of bullet holes and the man inside had been shot. Paramedics did arrive to the scene, but it was too late. That man was dead. Investigators still working to figure out who the victim is, trying to figure out why he was shot and who was responsible. And firefighters were busy overnight after an electrical spark sent a home up in flames. Crews say when they arrived at the home in the 1100 block of South San Marcos around 1230 in the morning, they saw a lot of smoke coming from inside the home. Fortunately, they were able to quickly contain the fire inside. Damages to the home were estimated at $10,000. Arson was not called the scene because San Antonio Fire Department says the cause was electrical. The latest news this morning, community rallying around together in the same spot where 16 year old Athen Graf was shot and killed earlier this month. The community remembering the short life he lived. His mother said her son had hoped to attend UTSA, later work in the mental health field. She said that he had a special way of connecting to people and loved life so much. The Medina County Sheriff's Office did make an arrest. They arrested and charged 18 year old David Garcia Jr. with Athens murder. No motive has been released yet, but investigators do believe that the two teenagers did know each other. The God Sees Your Tears ministry held their third annual homicide awareness event that honors those who have been killed over the past years. Last night's theme was Light of Hope, Day of Remembrance. Founder of the ministry, Teresa Salazar, lost her son to gun violence four years ago. She says holding this event and running her ministry opens painful wounds, but it helps coping with other families impacted by homicide. She says her biggest mission is to show those responsible for taking the lives of their loved ones that they will not become a victim to the hatred. For what? For what? What are you getting out of it? You're taking a life and you're always you're also taking a life of families. Because the day that that young man decided to take the life of my son, he took my life. He took the life of my other children. Salazar says their ministry has grown so much they are creating a documentary. She said after several requests, they will hold the next national homicide awareness event in Chicago, Illinois. Now to the pandemic here at home. 
COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County continuing to rise this weekend. In just the last 24 hours, almost 1,000 new cases reported. That brings us to a total of 93,476 total COVID-19 cases. 1,418 people have died here in Bear County. Now that is an increase of 992 new cases as of just yesterday. Meanwhile, 697 people are in our local hospitals, 238 in the ICU, 125 on ventilators. When it comes to the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for our county, here's what we know so far. There is no specific date set for vaccines to be administered, but according to the San Antonio Fire Department Public Information Officer Joe Arrington, fire crews have been told to begin filling out forms needed to get those shots. In addition to compel uh, completing those forms, firefighters have also been instructed to be ready to get the vaccine at any time. We have any and all updates on the vaccine, both on air and online at ksat.com. Texas health officials also reporting a small increase in hospitalizations from COVID-19 across the Lone Star State. The health department reporting a rise in hospitalizations from 9,109 to 9,192 patients, 13,254 new cases, 235 people died from the virus yesterday alone. The seven day rolling average of new cases in the state, this is across Texas, rose to 11,295 every day. Well, back here at home, San Antonio continues to grow. We continue to bring in new businesses and help local startups. And a big part of this new growth is Port San Antonio. Joining us in today's Leading SA segment is Jim Perschbach, President and CEO of Port San Antonio. Good morning. Morning. How y'all doing today? Doing well. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Now, we know a lot about Port San Antonio. We've done a few stories with you guys. But how would you explain what's going on at the port right now in terms of the technology aspect? What we're doing is working with companies that are applying technologies into the existing uh, industries that we have, the existing consumer technologies that we have. So it's really about platform integration and convergence. Well, the motto for the port is home for innovation, and you continue to bring in new companies from all over the world. So why are these businesses attracted to the Alamo City? Well, we've got two things. We've got a lot of people with tremendous talent, some institutions and organizations or universities that are doing amazing things. But we also have the ability to take those technologies and put them to work. Whether it's putting them to work in energy, whether it's putting them to work in manufacturing, we're doing some amazing things here in San Antonio. Now, the port is so much more than just a campus. It's a place for business, but also education. Can you talk to us about the school, SAMSAT, and also the workforce development programs you have in place? Sure. The, the most important thing is we move into a world that's going to be much more uh, technological. We need to make sure that education becomes a lifelong process. And with the Compass Rose Academy, which we've been very excited about, the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology and the programs there, it's all about connecting people with both educational opportunities and those educational opportunities connecting them to jobs. Now, how do you think the port is going to help shape the future economic impact of San Antonio? It's going to become, and I know it's the next segment, but it's going to be how we master the space domain. And space is not about going up there in jumpsuits. Space is about capturing energy and beaming it wirelessly down to Earth. It's about finding more resources available here on the planet. It's about finding resources that are available on the moon or elsewhere. And what San Antonio is doing, and you see some of those robots working right now, is finding ways for us to be able to access those new resources. And it's new resources that generate new opportunities for people. Well, Mr. Pershbach, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we'll see you again in our 8.30 half hour. And we'll ask you more about this really exciting Space Force program. Thank you. Thanks so much. Look forward to it. All right, see you then. Time now is 810, 56 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a real-life toy story, what some <laughs> Home Depot employees did while looking for Sheriff Woody's rightful owner. You a Toy Story fan? Yes. Uh, I'm more of a Buzz guy, but I get it. Oh, no, I was Woody girl. Plus, getting your gift shipped before it is too late when USPS says you need to mail the gifts to make sure that they arrive by Christmas Day. And getting cozy at home while watching the family holiday classic when and where you can watch Charlie Brown uh, Charlie Brown Christmas for free. And before we head to break, let's see, can we get anything out there? Uh, uh, it's still pretty gray out there. Pretty or cray. Pretty cray, yeah. <laughs> pretty gray. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey and see how cray the rest of the day is gonna be. Cray cray. This 
Say Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Ansira Nissan. Hi, this is Anthony Corey with Ansira Nissan. My wife and I would like to thank our son for his service and wish him a happy holidays. How many days are we away from Christmas? Hmm. What, what's today, the 13th? Can you do the math? 12 days. Yeah, 12 days, there you go. 12 days of Christmas, It also thank showed you. it on the calendar. <laughs> Sarah Spivey. Right behind us. <laughs> well, we're getting so close to Christmas, now it's a perfect time to watch those holiday classics with the family. And one film that guarantees to get you and the kids in the spirit, it is the one and only A Charlie Brown Christmas. You can actually watch it for free a few different ways this evening. The first and probably easiest option is on PBS. Keep in mind, it will not be on the PBS app. You can also watch it on the PBS Kid channel. If you're an Apple's TV subscriber, you can stream the movie ad-free in HD. For more information, just head over to our website, ksat.com. All right, so guys, aside from Charlie Brown Christmas, what is your favorite Christmas movie? I don't know. I. I just watched the making of the the Netflix that does the making yeah. of the Christmas. Oh, yeah. So I did. I watch. I think Elf. I was gonna say Ooh, Elf. That just one. really made me want to watch it like over and over. I remember seeing it in theaters, and I thought, okay, well, this one's gonna be a classic. It definitely is. Uh, now. It doesn't necessarily feel very wintry outside right now. It really is just pretty gray. What is that? That's fog. <laughs> That's fog right there, okay. Sarah. Thank you. The visibility is down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, and even some areas of light rain are being reported, mainly sprinkles right now around San Antonio. But there are some heavier uh, rain showers and even some thunderstorms closer to the coastal plain. Victoria got a thunderstorm this morning. Hallettsville seeing some light rain as well. A little bit closer to San Antonio, we do have those very small passing quick light streamer showers moving from south to north on the west side of the county and in the northwest side of the county just near Holotus we've got one little shower there a little light sprinkle out near Medina Lake as well and then we have some more rain developing along a cold front up near Junction and so we're going to continue to see light rain chances in the forecast through about lunch until then, though, it is going to be gray and we are going to have to deal with fog. Visibility, like I said, is down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, down to a little bit more than half a mile at JBSA Randolph, down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels, pretty much down to zero up on that Kendall County, Bear County line right near Bernie Stage Airfield and down to a quarter of a mile in Kerrville as well. And temperatures are on the mild side. While it is cool with temperatures in the low to mid 50s, uh, this is pretty warm for a December. December start of the day. Uh, again, 54 in Bernie Stage, 56 Bulverde, 56 San, San Antonio International Airport, 56 in New Braunfels. A wider view here, you can see just how cold it is behind that front. Temperatures in the single digits and teens along the uh, Rockies there. This front is going to move through San Antonio at about lunch. So from noon till about 1 to 2 p.m., we'll have that front move through. Look at all the snow around this area of low pressure for Oklahoma in the panhandle of Texas. Very impressive there. But in our future cast again, we're going to have the chance for light rain through noon. That's when that front is going to move through. And then look at that. Boom. We're going to see skies clear almost instantly. And it is going to get very windy very quickly. In fact, we could see wind gusts of up to 40 to 40 miles, five miles per hour from the west northwest today. That'll blow your socks off for sure. And it'll definitely toss around any lightweight patio furniture, lightweight outdoor Christmas decorations. So maybe leave those inflatables, those Christmas inflatables. Uh, Keep them deflated tonight or else we'll be fetching them down the road. OK, just a reminder that there is a red flag warning in effect for our counties west of San Antonio. Red flag warning means very high fire danger. You're going to have windy conditions. You're going to have gusts up to 45 miles per hour in low humidity. Any little spark will set a fire and the fires will spread quickly. Grass fires will spread quickly given these conditions. So please avoid outdoor burnings. Make sure to extinguish cigarettes fully. Don't just flick them outside, make sure to dispose of them properly. Okay, so just in summary today, gray to start, 30% light rain will be in the 50s through 10. Uh, around noon, that's when we'll start to see skies clear. We'll get up to 68 degrees today, but it's just going to be very windy in the afternoon and totally sunny as well. Then quickly tonight, it'll turn cold and gusty. Temperatures will be down into the upper 30s by midnight with a stout wind. So we're talking a wind chill again, gusts up to about 40 miles per hour tonight. It's going to be a gusty night, but clear 
and tonight we're going to see the Geminid meteor shower peak. So make sure to get away from lights, look to the darkest part of the sky, allow for 20 minutes for your eyes to adjust to see the meteors, and you could just see two meteors a minute maximum. Again, it peaks tonight. Now looking ahead to the week, we're going to be cold every morning. Temperatures in the 30s and cool in the afternoons with highs only in the 50s. Sarah, you, the sun sets around 530. Uh -huh. So what time do you think is best at like six or well, like well seven? after sunset. So anytime probably after 730, you'll be good to go. Just get out of the city. Go west. You strategizing? I had a viewer just email me. They said Medina Lake is mm. a good location. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. There you go. All right. Time now 820, 56 degrees out. Well, after the break, this little <laughs> toy, Woody, of course, was reunited with his owner, a little boy, but not before he actually went on some adventures. We'll explain next. Before we head to break, take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, six, five, six, fireball one, daily four, four, zero, six, five, fireball zero. Cash 5, 3, 9, 15, 16, 23. Texas Lotto, 4, 31, 36, 50, 52, 54. And Powerball, 17, 54, 56, 63, 69. Powerball 20, Power Play 2, win big. So check this story out. A little boy's lost doll finds its way home. I refuse to call this a doll. It's a Woody toy from Toy Story. So before he actually went home, he became a temporary Home Depot employee. Check it out. So there he is. Oh, look at that. So it all happened when employees found, paint. <laughs> found the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> that have been left behind at the store in New Hampshire. They posted on social media asking locals to get the word out, then had some fun adding images of him with a Home Depot outfit on. In a signature Home Depot a apron, putting in some work around the store about a week later, Woody was reunited with his owner. He's in the <laughs> bathtub. <laughs> mixing paint. Oh, my my nephews love Buzz and Woody. This story makes me so happy. See, I'm a big Buzz person. Oh, um, see, of course I'm Woody. All right, and the iconic FAO Schwartz is offering up a night of wonder by listing its Manhattan toy store on Airbnb. Oh my Ooh. gosh, it's like real life big. One lucky family of four from New York City can spend a night there on December 21st. They'll have free reign of the two-story, 20,000 square foot wonderland. It also includes a shopping spree, a feast, and a music lesson Aww. on that famous giant floor piano. Yep, just like the one, like I said, in the yep. movie Big. The priceless experience is very reasonable. It's only $25 mm. for the night. Okay. An online lottery for the stay on Airbnb's website will help determine the lucky winning family. I am going to apply. There you go. All right. 826, 56 degrees out. Still ahead, the president and CEO of Port SA will be joining us live to talk about the future of San Antonio and if Space Force can be a part of it. Plus, the latest when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine, when states can expect to receive the first shipments. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, December 13th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. You know, Yesterday was so nice. I took it's the perfect. dogs on like a long walk. Oh, yeah. But Sarah, you said it's going to be windy today. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's gray outside right now, but the second part of the day is going to be sunny and windy. By the end of the day, you won't really remember how it started here. Gray and kind of uh, gloomy. You'll remember how windy it got. Uh, in fact, we could see gusts up to 40 miles per hour today. But right now outside, the story is Gray skies, some areas of very light passing rain showers, sprinkles, honestly, and visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in San Antonio. It's even worse up I-10 toward the Hill Country, Kerrville, Bernie Stage Airfield visibility down to less than quarter of a mile, practically zero visibility down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels. So we do have areas of dense fog, a little bit of improvement out toward Hondo and Castroville, but still visibility less than two miles in many places. And like I said, we do have 
areas of very light passing rain showers. Uh, let's focus in on this area right up in Bandera, Medina County, a light rain shower over Medina Lake as well, and on the western part of uh, Bear County, just inside Loop 1604 and 410, just to the north of Leon Valley, a passing rain shower there. Uh, there's a more definitive line of light rain out near Junction, uh, and that's because of a cold front that's actually going to move through today, and that's why it's going to be windy. So we'll continue to have a chance for rain showers through about noon. That's when that front's going to move through. Then it's going to become sunny very quickly, a high temperature only near 68, but you'll really feel the cold air tonight when it'll continue to be windy with temperatures dropping down into the 30s by midnight and wind gusts up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. So as you can see, today's weather Man, it's going to have everything. And so we've got a very busy forecast coming up for you in just a few minutes, as well as a look ahead to this upcoming week. It'll be pretty cool. Thank you, Sarah. Well, San Antonio police are looking for what sounds like some unlikely suspects in a carjacking. A man told police that a woman with her five children stole his vehicle. So all this happened just northwest of downtown. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters, where police are now investigating. Now, Katrina, earlier you mentioned that the man was expecting to meet up with someone. Yeah, police say that's what he told them, that he had gone to a trail to meet up with a woman not exactly expecting that a woman would steal his SUV. He called police around 1130 last night, telling them that this happened near Cincinnati and North Navidad streets. The man says he went to the Martinez Creek Trail to meet up with a woman. Again, a woman did walk up with five children and a gun, according to the victim. He says she demanded the keys to his silver Nissan Rogue, loaded the children into it and then drove off. Police searched that area in their helicopter, but did not find the SUV. The victim says the last time he saw it, it was headed toward Interstate 10. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. In your latest news this morning, the United States Navy has ended the search for a sailor and San Antonio native who is believed to have fallen overboard this week. Navy officials say they searched more than 607 square nautical miles for more than 55 hours. This search all taking place off the coast of Southern California. They were looking for 20-year-old Ethan Goolsby. Now, the Navy says a search started Thursday morning after a lookout spotted what appeared to be a person in the water. Three helicopters and a boat were launched in response. One sailor unaccounted for during a command-wide muster. In your morning headlines, popular Netflix cheer star Jerry Harris has been indicted on a new child pornography and sex charge. Authorities say 21-year-old, the 21-year-old is accused of asking a 13-year-old to send him explicit photos of himself and traveled from Texas to Florida with the intent to have sex with a 15-year-old in May of 2019. In September, Harris's attorney denied the allegations against his client and said the accusations occurred when he was a teenager. Now to the latest in the pandemic, what could be the beginning of an end of this pandemic. Now, the vaccine for widespread use in the United States, this is getting ready to roll out of a Michigan manufacturing plant. Throughout the morning, we have seen trucks line up and fill up. Now, the shipments this morning will set in motion the biggest vaccination effort in the United States history. The shots that are critical to stopping the nation's coronavirus spread, they are destined to reach states beginning tomorrow. Well, Port San Antonio has over 80 tenant customers who employ more than 14,000 people, and together they generate more than $5 billion in annual economic activity right here in our region. Joining us once again is Jim Pershbach, President and CEO of Port San Antonio. Good morning, Mr. Pershbach. Morning, how y'all doing? Doing well, thank you so much for joining us again. So Space Force, we hear a lot about of it. And San Antonio is one of the final cities on the possible list. So if the Alamo City is selected for Space Command, what could that mean for our area? Well, first of all, we've really already won. Being one of six cities in the country being considered for Space Command, which is the headquarters for all the services and their space functions, is just a tremendous recognition of what we do here. But as Janice Oceda Herrera and our friends at EDF will tell you, headquarters is just so important because wherever that command and control goes, we'll have an outsized say in the expenditures, the research, and the investment made there. Now, we have seen people ridicule the idea of Space Force. I mean, there's even a show on Netflix about it. But you have said it is a new necessary element of the future. Why is it so important? 
Well, it's important because there are a lot of good things that we rely on in space for right here on Earth. Communications, we're going to move a lot of our power systems, a lot of our technology is going to be running through satellites up in space. And if you can control those satellites, a lot of good happens. But if somebody gets in there and does something wrong, a lot of bad can happen. So being able to protect our investment in the satellite constellations is going to be important, not just for our national security, but for making sure that way of life here on Earth stays safe and secure. Finally, I mean, this is the big question when it comes to our local economy and Space Force. Are there any port SA companies that could be making a mark in space? Well, there sure are, and there are a lot of them, Max, that you've already talked to that are doing some amazing things with robots. Everything from Reckon Point and their ability to send a robot up there and measure within two centimeters of accuracy to plus one. You see night aerospace and the medical modules that they're making. Zyrec and their 72-foot-tall laser-equipped robot. There are some tremendous things going on right here in San Antonio. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Pershbach, for your time, and you enjoy your Sunday, uh, your rest of the Sunday. And, of course, you can catch this full interview after the show on KSAT.com. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our KSAT community partners are highlighting a magical drive through experience this holiday season without having to leave your car. You and your family can enjoy an illuminated journey to the North Pole with a mile-long light display that surrounds the AT&T Center. The event runs through January 3rd with gates opening at 6 p.m. daily. Half of the proceeds are donated to Spurs Give, the Spurs Sports and Entertainment's nonprofit partner. To find out ticket prices and times available, just head over to our website at ksat.com. Just for the record, it's at the AT&T Center, not at the North Pole. Yeah, but it's the North Pole. <laughs> yeah. All right, 838, 56 degrees out. And speaking of Spurs, Spurs give, great nonprofit, but also great basketball team. The Silver and Black are back. We're going to give you an inside look, check out the highlights from the first preseason game, and give you a new look at the new rookie. Plus, making sure your holiday gifts get delivered on time, the recommendation from the USPS and several retailers. Before we head to break, one last look at the Alamo City, or at what least what we can that? see of it. It's fog. There we go. <laughs> we need that meteorological expert. That's fog. Yeah. So is the rest of the day going to be great? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Have we got deals for you? KSAT Deals is here to save you money right now. Welcome to KSAT Deals at KSATDeals.com. We have a long list of bargains for you, but we only have time for two today, one for the bedroom and one for the gadget savvy shopper. Let's start in the bedroom. The Bamboo Comfort six-piece luxury sheet set is very breathable. The microfiber and bamboo help to reduce allergens. Now the retail price $109, but the case at deals price $32.99. That's a 70% discount. Moving on to the smartwatch. This tracks everything from calories burned to your sleeping and blood oxygen levels. It works both with iOS and Android. Now the retail price $199. Case that deal, $44.99. That's a 77% discount. Now you can get these two along with several others only on caseatdeals.com. green light, a glimmer of hope. A vaccine is on the way. Where will it go first? How will you get your shot? Today, the head of the FDA, his plan to vaccinate the country, and is relief on the way. Our powerhouse team breaks it all down on ABC's This Week. In your morning consumer news, the U.S. Postal Services and several retailers urge you to place your orders soon or as soon as possible if you want those gifts to arrive in time for the holidays. USA Today reports the Postal Service is flush with packages and short on employees available to process them due to the pandemic. It says to place your ground orders by Tuesday if you're sending Christmas gifts with UPS, FedEx or USPS. Retailers like JCPenney, Lowe's, Kohl's, and Bath and Body Works also say you should shop soon to avoid expedited shipping fees. All right, if you keep up with the Kardashians, the Kardashian family sealed a new deal with the streaming service Hulu. The multi-year contract will be available on Star. The project is expected to debut sometime in 2021. The deal comes a few months after the family announced the end of their long-running reality show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians on cable news channel E. 
And the iconic FAO Schwartz is offering up a night of wonder by listing its Manhattan toy store on Airbnb. This looks so cool. One lucky family of four from New York City can spend a night there on December 21st for only $25. They'll have free reign of two st of the two story 20,000 square foot wonderland, just like you can see in big. It also includes a shopping spree, a feast and a music lesson mm. on that giant piano. An online lottery for this stay on Airbnb's website will help determine the winner. All right, Sarah has your entertainment news. Now it is time to talk sports, and it is never a bad day to talk basketball. Yes, the Silver and Black are back. Spurs tipping off their preseason here in San Antonio, taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder, a new-look Oklahoma City Thunder. No fans in the stand, but there was competition. First quarter, you just saw DeMar feed Jacopoto floater the Spurs' first season preseason points. Trey Lyles driving, throw it off high off the glass. Very tough shot. Spurs will leave 14-11. Rookie and first-round pick. Here he goes. Bang. Devin Vassell creating his own shot, 16-footer, and it is good. Trails do, uh, Spurs do trail, 29-24, 33-32 after one second quarter. Spurs playing from behind. Rookie Rudy Gay from three. They're down 56-47. Cue up Rudy for another triple. He looks good. Had a good bubble season, too. Plus, another triple. And OKC up 10. They lead 73-58 at half. Let's take it to the third quarter. There we go. Spurs behind 81-61, but... There he is, the rookie again from three. And eight minutes ago, Rudy Gay stealing the ball, taking it back, a little Euro step. Not bad, not bad, laying it in. Another look from a lower angle. OKC up 15, but let's take another look at the rookie. From three again, Spurs still down 85-77. 98-90 after a three, and in the final quarter, Jacopoto, Patty Mills showing off. Actually, fun fact, he was late to the media part because he was getting a lift in. Eh, he had a good game, but still. After trailing by 20, the Thunder hold on 121 to 108. Patty led the Spurs 24 points. A rookie had 12, but it's preseason, so win-loss doesn't really affect the playoff chances. Good to see the guys back in action. Real contributor in a rookie. All right, it is Pro Sunday, so coming. naturally we get to talk about David football. Lawford. Two big games today. We got Cowboys and we have Bengals. We'll take it on the Bengals at 12. They're still somehow in the playoff hunt. And next up, we have Texans taking on the Bears. That game also at noon. Both games will be away. There, there we go. Look at us. We're throwing out the triple box. I on like GMSA this. Weekends. I feel so far away from you guys. Hi, friends. Hi. Not me. This is like a Brady Bunch thing here. I so know. it's pretty cool. Uh, we are going to have a wild weather day. It is going to go from cloudy and gray and even a little damp in some areas to completely sunny and windy with fire danger. Yeah, you heard that right. So there's a lot to talk about in the forecast. Outside right now, this is the view we've got. 56 degrees with some areas of sprinkles and visibility down to a quarter of a mile. So dense fog is out there right now. Some thunderstorms going on near the Houston area and some light rain out near Howlettsville and Gonzalez as well. Uh, here in San Antonio, we're really only dealing with these streamer showers, these passing light rain showers, some areas of sprinkles. You can see that's the case out near Medina Lake right now near Bandera and then up to the north right near Junction. We do have another line, a really highly defined line of showers. This is along that cold front that's going to flip our weather pattern. But for now, the biggest hazard out there uh, is the fog. Visibility is down to practically zero up across parts of I-10 toward the hill country. So Bernie Stage Airfield, Kerrville visibility nearly at zero. It's down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, down to a quarter of a mile at JBSA Randolph and down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels. Visibility down three quarters of a mile out near Hondo, down to three miles in Del Rio. So again, it's kind of this core area of uh, Guadalupe, Camal, Bear County, up toward Kerr County in the Hill Country that's dealing with the really dense fog right now. Temperatures pretty mild. For this time of the day, we usually wake up in the upper 30s and low 40s this time of year, but we're in the 50s. Those temperatures are right smack dab near the dew points, and that's why we're seeing fog develop. Corpus Christi starting off at 72 this morning, but a wider view here, and you can very clearly see the cold core of air across the Rockies that's just spilling uh, across parts of the central plains. There's our cold front right now. 
This cold front is going to clear skies and it's going to make things very, very windy. Satellite and radar, you can see very clearly all the snowfall across parts of Oklahoma and the panhandle of Texas around that area of low pressure. And again, taking you through the future cast, we will have a chance for light rain through noon here in San Antonio. That's when that front is going to move through and then skies are going to pretty much clear instantly and it will be sunny and it will be very, very windy. Wind gusts of up to 45 miles per hour in some places. If you have lightweight patio furniture, that's gonna be across the street. If you have Christmas decorations that are pretty lightweight or those inflatables, don't inflate those inflatables tonight because these wind gusts are gonna last through uh, the overnight hours. And in fact, during the day today from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., there is a red flag warning for counties west of San Antonio in this hot pink color Color because fire danger is going to be a big hazard. Any little fire that gets, gets started is going to spread very rapidly, so please avoid outdoor burning. Here's the day for you. Again, we're going to see skies clear very quickly around noon, 68 for the high, and then it'll get cold tonight. Windy, too. Temperatures are going to be in the 30s, probably close to midnight. And again, we could see gusts up to about 45, 40 miles per hour today. Uh, by tomorrow, though, those winds will subside, and the week ahead is actually going to be pretty quiet. We're going to start off cold every day with temperatures in the 30s and it'll still be cool in the afternoons with temperatures in the 50s or near 60 degrees. Max and Sarah. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. 851, 56 degrees out. It can be a recipe for disaster. We're talking about the violence that can erupt at a home as we live under pandemic restrictions and now holiday chaos tomorrow on GMSA. Signs you may not see and ways you can help. And the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police tell us a gathering at a home this morning on South Home Street turned very unfriendly. Officers say witnesses told them there was a dispute between two men over a woman. Paramedics found a man down the street with stab wounds to his chest. Uh, they believe that he tried to run away after being stabbed. Police did arrest the suspect at the home. They say the man who was stabbed was stable as he was sent to the hospital. Just got the pollen count in. Mold is low at 270. Mountain cedar is present, but it is low. With today's winds, though, mountain cedar may actually go up by tomorrow. Now, visibility is down to about a quarter of a mile in many places, so dense fog and some light rain is possible through uh, about noon. That's when we'll see that front move through. It'll get sunny and it'll get windy. A high temperature near 68, but getting cold tonight and wind gusts are going to be the biggest story today. Gusts up to 40 to 45 miles per hour and then a quiet week ahead. We'll be seeing temperatures in the 30s in the mornings and then cool in the afternoons with sunshine. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest your Sunday. Happy Sunday.